Having been to a lot of countries in the world, the place that I feel most compelled to photograph is actually my home, Singapore. I'm always asking, what is the flavour of Singapore? So I think living abroad taught me a lesson. It taught me to understand myself more deeply about how closely I am connected to home. I felt as if I belong to Asia. It is where I understand the people most. Are you on a holiday here? Just give me that chin that you had just now, like, ugh. Okay. Gorgeous. Okay, alright, alright, I like that. How I became a documentary photographer is that I quit my job and picked up the camera. <laughs> I was working as a newspaper journalist. Before I could get too comfortable in my seat, I felt like, okay, this is the time to go out and venture on my own. And I didn't actually have concrete photography skills. Actually, my photography sucked. <laughs> and I think I learned photography by being a photographer. I learned on the job and I learned through practicing. I've always been interested in people. I've always been inclined to talk to strangers, um, to know their stories. So it's just switching mediums from pen to holding the camera. <laughs> Once you've had a good understanding of the equipment that you own and the equipment that you're using, that's when you can let go of what you have learned and explore photography, exploring here. So you're exploring in terms of your own thinking, what your own opinion actually is, what your perspectives to the world are. So I really like the raw titanium look of the Expro Tree. I love that it's a rangefinder style. So that means that when I put the camera to my face, half of it can still be revealed to my subject. You need to understand how the people you're photographing uh, feels and reacts to you. When I remember, I would actually put the camera away when I'm talking to my subject. They've taken away the exterior LCD and made it flip screen instead. Um, we are used to looking at the LCD, at looking at what's going on and photographing that way, as if we were holding a handphone. A camera is not a handphone. By having a screen like that, it actually forces us to, to close it and say that we have to look through the viewfinder. You have to move your head, right? You have to move your body. You have to get into the act of photography. You're, you're a participant in it and you're, and you're not just flippantly pressing the trigger. So every effort to arrive at the moment where you press the trigger, it is deliberate. So we're going back to the days when a camera is a camera. So I'm here in Chinatown in one of the more popular chess spots. I'm just gonna hang around them and like take a couple of casual shots, um, see their reaction, you know, if they start moving away then maybe that's not where I should be photographing. You know, so if you're kind of at it for like one minute, two minutes and nobody's saying no, go away. You notice that I was using a 35mm earlier and now I'm going to use the 16 I'm going to go in a bit closer. This angle is it's kind of interesting because you actually see the multicultural facade of Singapore. Like um, you have the Chinese uh, man playing chess in the foreground and in the background you have the Malay dudes. I don't know what they're doing but they're kind of sitting there. Hang on. When you start to think about layering your frame then the story develops, right? Because as a photographer, you only got one frame. That one frame has to tell a story. You like my camera? Uh, take photo of you, hold the camera. Uh. You like not? Let's not. You like to have a bit of a fun, humor, and sort of like a banter while taking photos of people. I mean, if they start talking to me, I like to start talking to them. Doesn't matter if it's a joke, 
uh, I think it makes the experience you enjoy yourself more. So the game over here looks quite intense and probably that's what we want to capture. <laughs> okay, okay. So that the uncle saying no. So he's saying no, so that's not an angle that I would go for and maybe I would move around. So you know with chess it's a very still moving game and if we can get their hands in action, that would be best. So then you can show, you know, that it's compressed the action of chess all into one frame. Just now the uncle had his hand here. Uncle, you put your hand here. Well, I'm actually following here. So I, I like these sorts of gestures. It's kind of like freaky in, in you know in a in a quirky, morbid way. And you notice like he's got his super long um super long fingernail over there. I don't know what it's for, you know, like digging stuff and all that so I kind of like to include these details in the shot um, it's not chess but it, it, it has a lot of character so let's see how we can frame it yeah I love that okay thank you uncle if you're going out to do street you always have to start off happy that's the only way you can get good shots because you know people respond to that people are attracted to that energy and I think, you know, keeping your spirits up is a really powerful thing. What is so beautiful about it is that there, there is an element of purity involved in it. It's making us question, where did photography come from? It's really an attitude of how you choose to photograph rather than what you choose to frame. It is capturing a slice of life by stopping time, putting that time into an image. So when you think about it, that act itself is sacred.